Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the EcoWit HP 2550C, a 7 inch high resolution color display that displays all your weather measurements. Previously we reviewed the EcoWit WitBoy and the WH57 lightning sensor, along with several other EcoWit sensors and found them all to be high quality, very functional and accurate, especially considering the price point. Now one of the biggest issues, at least for me, with any weather station is that they generate a wealth of information. This is reported to the app, stored on the device and in the cloud, and even in Home Assistant through integrations that you can view through whatever dashboard you like. But if you want to see the external temperature or humidity, or even the forecast, you need to go and open the app or ask your voice assistant or work on a desktop or laptop and view the dashboard. Well, problem solved. Now you can simply view all the information on a large, colorful, easy to read display that updates every few seconds so that you get the latest information. Problem solved. So let's wet that finger and see which way the wind is blowing. You get the unit itself, which is a high resolution 7 inch display with a good contrast and vibrant colors. Although it is not touchscreen, which is not a bad thing as you avoid fingerprints all over the display. The display is approximately 195 millimeters wide. Remember displays are measured diagonally and 138 millimeters tall and 20 millimeters thick and weighs at an impressive 296 grams. So light enough to be not an issue with hanging from screws on the wall, but heavy enough to feel sturdy and well-made. Below the screen are eight physical buttons that align with the icons on the screen and are used for navigation and controls. To the right side is where all the ports are housed. There is a physical pinhole for a reset. Note that the no reset tool is provided. Then you have a 3.5 mm 5 volt DC barrel jack that connects via the provided cable to a USB plug. No power supply is provided, but as this only consumes one amp, any charging brick from an old phone should work. Then we come to a mini USB socket which I can only assume is used for programming or flashing the hardware, as using this port is not mentioned in the user manual. Now I think this was a real miss by EcoWick, combining the barrel jack and the USB port to supply power and data across would have modernized this device and made it a lot more user friendly. After all, lose or damage the power barrel jack and you'll be hunting around for a replacement as opposed to switching to another readily available USB-C cable Let's hope this makes it into the next version. Next is the micro SD card. You can use this for flashing new firmware, which I'd suggest is not really needed as this is already an incredibly stable platform. Alternatively, you can store weather data locally. Now a word of caution, as one gigabyte can store 10 years of data, you don't need a large card. In fact, it only supports a maximum of 32 gigabytes formatted as FAT32 although you can get around this by using an application called Rufus. On the back of the unit is an angle stand, allowing for desktop positioning, along with two keyhole wall mounting holes, although no screws or roll plugs are provided. With all EcoWit devices, installation is a breeze. First off, we don't actually need to have a gateway to allow this device to work as it can connect directly to your sensors such as the WH57 lightning sensor or the WH51 soil sensor. But for this demonstration, I'll be connecting it to my account as a second gateway and displaying the information from my WhipBoy. First, we need to connect the Wi-Fi. Turn on your HP 2550 display. Press the settings button, which is the furthest to the right. Now use the up and down arrows to the setup page. Now use the up and down buttons on the setup page to navigate to the Wi-Fi scan option. Press the zoom plus button, which is on the leftmost button. The scan will start automatically. Select your home Wi-Fi and using the up and down arrows and the return button, select it. Enter your Wi-Fi password. This can be very fiddly thanks to the lack of a touch screen, but you only need to do it once. Now press the okay button. Now while we're in the settings, you can also add the HP 2550 to your EcoWiz app. I'll assume that you already have installed the app and have an account. QR codes for iOS and Android on screen. From the setup screen, press the settings button three times until you see the factory screen. Use the up and down arrows to navigate to the about. Use the zoom plus while the display is highlighted for about. 
you will need the MAC address, so keep this screen open. Now go and open the EcoWIT app. Press the hamburgers in the top left hand corner of the screen. Select My Devices. Make sure that the weather station is selected. Press Add New Device. Now a lot of devices will show up. It would be handy if they labeled these for ease of identification, but you need the second from last as shown on the screen. Select this. Give your display a name. Leave the device type and Mac slash IME alone. Now enter the MAC address of the HP 2550 from the About screen. Select your country and location. Optionally decide if you wish data to be public and press Save. Give it a minute or two and the HP 2550 weather station should pop up and show us online. But if you have any issues, EcoWid have some excellent technical support plus some of the most detailed user manuals in the industry. The user manual for the HP 2550, link in the description, is 93 pages long of detailed description and instructions to help you through whatever configuration questions you might have. Well done, EcoWid. Now this display can do a lot and we'll only be scratching the surface, otherwise we'll be here for an hour long video. Let's run through the main features. First, the seven inch screen is super clear, crisp and bright. It's easy to view from a distance, even in direct sunlight. The screen has two backgrounds of light and dark, although I found it much easier to read on the eyes in the dark mode. The screen can be connected to Wi-Fi or RF, which is illustrated by the icons on the screen. The two largest icons on the screen are to the top left, which are for temperature and wind. The temperature readings give you today's high and low plus the current. Around the outside is a colored circle that changes with the temperature to signify comfort level. Next to this is a wind reading, showing the current wind speed, direction, both pictorial around the outside of the circle, but also in cardinal as direction on a compass, and in degrees along with a maximum gust speed. But though these readings are the feels like outside temperature, dew point and humidity, along with a 10 minute average for direction and maximum daily gust. There are purpose-built icons allocated for the EcoWIT WH55 multi-channel leak detectors, so they are visible from a glance, plus the date and time which are synchronized with the internet. Then you get the WH51 soil moisture sensors that can be viewed along with the WH57 lightning sensor readings. You get the indoor temperature and humidity. These can be cycled through various different channels that can be displayed, which are fully configurable. Below this is a rain gauge that for me draws its data from the Whitboy and provides readings for instant, an event, hourly, weekly, monthly, and annually. Then you get a barometer reading for relative and absolute, the pressure change, and a forecast that comes from the internet. And to finish off the display, you have a pictorial of the sun across the sky with sunrise, sunset, solar energy per square meter, UV index, plus moon phase. Now that's a lot of data to absorb, but it's thoughtfully placed, grouped like information, and added graphic icons where appropriate for easy visualization. Outside of the screen, you get a rock solid communication RF protocol with a range of up to 300 meters. Also, the screen is its own gateway, so there's no need for additional hardware, and it even has its own local storage, something my GW2000 gateway doesn't have although is available on the GW1000 and 3000 gateways. And to round it off, the display has a built-in alarm with a snooze feature, although I'm not sure who'd be using that. Now there is a lot to love about the EcoWIT CH2550 display. It does exactly what it's supposed to do and does it very well. However, I have a few issues. Firstly, it's a rebadged device and not unique to EcoWIT. So yes, they coded it specifically for their ecosystem, but it's nothing new that we haven't seen from other brands before. Now that's not a bad thing, as it means that it has rock steady performance. It's just that the company the size of EcoWid, I would have expected a bespoke design. The second issue I have is the power supply. I mean, who uses a barrel jack and a mini USB in 2025? I know this is related to the first issue of the rebadge, but come on EcoWid, USB-C please. And finally, and this relates to the age of the equipment, limiting it to micro SD to 32 gigabytes and making it use FAT32 just screams old technology. If they upgraded the hardware, then maybe they could support larger capacities, 
and maybe, for example, store the images from the EcoWet time elapsed cameras. So is it worth the purchase? Yes. It does exactly as described and does it very well. It's just that they could have done it so much better for little to no extra cost. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that like button, comment, and share. And if you'd like to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to the material plus other perks. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.